Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Kristen Petrucci about the importance of gratitude, a gratitude lifestyle, and the ROI of gratitude. Kristen Petrucci, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm really excited uh, that we got connected. Uh, when I saw your background and your profile, I thought, wow, this is, this is something that will be a really great discussion. And then we had to schedule it out a few weeks because we were both very busy. And uh, so I've been looking forward to this conversation uh, for a long time. Me too. It's yeah. It's been interesting to juggle everything around being a stay-at-home mom and an entrepreneur as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, so before we get started uh, with our discussion, I did want to share with the listeners uh, your bio and then give you a chance to um, add anything that you would like to add by way of introduction. Uh, Kristen received her postgraduate positive psychology training from the University of Utah. It helped save her life after suffering from brain trauma and damage in March of 2016. Known as the mindset, the mindset architect, she is mother of five children, a transformational speaker, corporate mindfulness consultant, and executive coach. Her main focus is to build a victory mindset, incorporating micro practices, gratitude, wonder, and connection, helping others thrive, not just survive. She practices a gratitude lifestyle and is the author of Daily Reflections, Therapeutic Gratitude Practice Journal, host of Gratitude Stories, founder of KP Speaks, um, and co-founder of Women's Soul Summit. Uh, what a wonderful background, uh, such an interesting uh, background that has informed your professional life, and I really look forward to hearing uh, more about that. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I've got a few things in there. One time I presented to One Million Cups, they were like, you do too many different things. You've got to bring it down to one thing. But I, I find a lot of joy in helping others be able to get out of their heads and into their lives, as well as um, as I continue to teach, it helps remind me the practices that I need to continue doing to stay healthy. I love that. And I, I'm guilty of the same thing. Uh, I have my fingers in like a thousand pies at once. Uh, and sometimes people tell me I should just focus, but eh, I, I think you do what you do and, and everyone uh, functions differently. So more power I agree. to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, good. Anything you would like to add by way of introduction before we launch in? Uh, I just, you know, it says that I live a gratitude lifestyle and it's literally the thing that keeps me going every day. And I'm really excited to dive into why gratitude can be so powerful as well as wonder and connection. Awesome, awesome. Well, so let's let's start with that. Um, what do you mean by a gratitude lifestyle? And what's the difference between, you know, we talk about the concept of gratitude generally, uh, but what's the difference between general gratitude and active gratitude? That was a fabulous question. A lot of people feel like they're uh, grateful or they're leading a gratitude life by doing their uh, list of, you know, their gratitude list every night or hopefully at least every night by just writing those three things down and then done and done and out the door. And an act of gratitude is something where you bring it in viscerally. So as you are going through the day, you think of something you're grateful for, you take in a deep breath and you're able to connect that to your emotions and your body. And it starts becoming um, a mindset instead of just a list of something that you're supposed to do to be grateful. So what does that look like for you um, as you're trying to live an active gratitude lifestyle? 
So for me, in the mornings, let's say things are going absolutely insane because I have, right now I have three littles at my house and I'm starting to get into maybe a mode of, oh, this is really hard or I'm so tired. I actually will stop myself. I'll take a very deep breath and I will think I'm so grateful to be able to have these children. I'm so grateful to be a mom. And I will think about one of those memories or one of those moments where I have felt so much love and so much gratitude for my children. And it helps break that negative thought cycle. And it goes even deeper than just that. You can do that with even the sheets on your bed. So you might get into bed, you're like, oh, I'm so grateful I'm in bed. And you can think, so grateful for these comfy, cozy sheets. And then you start going into the thought of how the sheets actually were able to get onto your bed. So I'm grateful for my job. I'm thankful for those people that raised the cotton. I'm grateful for those who farmed it, the ones who sewed it. And so you start thinking about how you're able to get to that point of having sheets on your bed. And it just starts becoming a mindset and an active gratitude lifestyle. You start seeing how many things come into play for you to be able to have the life that you have. Awesome. And, you know, I, I'm in a similar situation. Uh, we have six children, uh, ages 16 down to seven, all in school. And now it's the summer, so they're, so we're not trying to do the homeschooling, but oh my goodness, when, when uh, COVID hit and school shut down and my wife and I are, are trying to work from home while also helping our six children with, with homeschooling, um, it was stressful. It was a challenge. And at times, I have to admit, we probably weren't expressing as much gratitude as perhaps we should have been uh, because we were safe. We were healthy. Uh, you know, our kids had each other, uh, you know, through this difficult time. And we had the capacity. We had, we had uh, the ability to continue their education uh, virtually and with relatively little disruption. Uh, my wife and I are both uh, professors. We both teach at the university. And so, you know, we, we had flexibility with our schedules. Um, and it was what you said is, is perfect because it, we get into these negative thought cycles very easily uh, if we're not careful. Um, we can just slip into them. And then it can, it can take over our whole day. Just some little thing that happens in the morning, um, just the natural, you know, give and take of, of the, the dynamics with your children and, and, the, and the frustrations that can occur and the things that happen. Um, but if we, can, if we can take a step back and we can recognize and remember the tremendous blessings that we have and, and be grateful and show our gratitude for those things, um, then, then th those hard things that we have to deal with as a part, you know, that's combined with the, the, the good and the hard, um, we can manage those better. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it's, we just so often forget that uh, unless we really are mindful about it and, and really uh, put the time and energy, the mental energy into it. Absolutely. And I like how you use the word mindful. It is being mindful. It's being present. Uh, a lot of times we get caught up in what's going to happen in the future or something that happened in the past and we ruminate, which I know maybe a lot of people know what that means mentally to ruminate, to have that thought going over and over in your mind. But it comes from cattle, from um, what cows do with their food. So they'll swallow it, then they burp it back up into their mouth, and then they chew the cud. I know the name cud just because I grew up kind of on a farm setting, but they'll chew their cud, and then they swallow it back, and then they bring it back up and chew it again. And that's what we do as humans. Like we have so much, we actually have a lot of time to be in our heads. And, you know, back in the day, people didn't have that time. I feel like mental wellness is really absolutely 100% essential in this day and age because we have so much time to just be in our heads. And that mindful practice, um, gratitude is a mindfulness practice, it's being present, taking that deep breath in, stopping and being like, oh, I'm so glad I can actually breathe today or I have water coming out of my tap that is clean. I mean, we have so many things to be grateful for. There is a place though when we might be really depressed or really, you know, like having some type of emotional time where we can't really feel grateful i've definitely been there and that's where we just hold on knowing there will be a time where we will be able to find that joy and that peacefulness again and in that moment acknowledging and honoring that you know what i don't feel grateful right now i'm feeling 
awful and just honoring that you are allowing yourself to have those feelings and then wrapping it up with a little gratitude later on. I'm glad I got through that moment. I'm glad I got through that day. I'm so grateful I'm still here. Yeah, I think we, we certainly want to acknowledge that there are, are legitimate mental health challenges that require um, the, the, the assistance of a mental health professional uh, and, and uh, medications at times. Um, so what we're talking about is not in relation to that, right? Um, mm -hmm. There, there are there are um, practices that you can get into that can help to manage um, some other mental health challenges for sure. Uh, but there, there are there are things that you know. I, I'm a believer that most people would probably benefit uh, from seeing a counselor, um, uh, just because it, it it allows you the opportunity to be self reflexive and 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 to really be uh, aware of what's going on inside of you. And, and some people. Are really good at that naturally other people you know they kind of bottle stuff up and they're not really good at that so i, I think i think uh, most people would probably benefit from from that and particularly if you're dealing with uh, trauma depression um and you know extreme anxiety those sorts of things yeah absolutely um people should reach out for help uh, yeah. what we're talking about is more the day-to-day -day, though right the, absolutely know, the it's like an inoculation uh -huh. it's something that brings your level of being able to handle those high stresses to you're actually able to handle even higher stress because you are present you're able to be grateful the gratitude is actually a physiological experience where when you are able to have that internal um, gratitude that boosts you up and it's like it's actually scientifically proven that when you are um, practicing gratitude your levels of depression will lessen you're healthier they've done it for heart patients um, and those who were having heart conditions when they practice gratitude uh, they started to get better so physiologically it can actually boost your health it can boost your moods it can help you out but as you said you know the clinical psychological um, issues or like me personally i had something extremely traumatic happen just in february i've been going to counseling and therapy for that because there's certain things that i need to talk through with a therapist i'm still practicing my gratitude i'm i'm here because I practice what I teach and, and share. If I didn't practice gratitude, I already know I wouldn't be here anymore. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for being vulnerable and, and, and sharing that. I do think, I think things are better now than they were in the past in terms of the social stigma around mental health issues, um, but there's still a stigma. Uh, and so it's, it's good for us to be able to talk about it and be open about it. And I absolutely agree that um, not only is there a lot of, of science uh, behind what you just said, uh, but my own personal experience as well <clears throat> has been that you know li life is hard. Like there, there, there's a lot of awesome things that come at you in life. Um, so many things that you, you you can bask in in the joy and, and and the peace and and you know those all those good things. But there are really hard things that come too, and I don't think anyone is immune from those hard things. Uh, and so it's a matter about how we frame it in our mind. Uh, and you know, if, if I'm facing a whole slew of, of hard things consecutively, that's where you're at the most risk for starting to slip into these negative thought uh, practices um, that can really just drive you down. Uh, and so I, I kind of joke with my wife, um, you know that. I, I tend to kind of play devil's advocate and like if I'm really facing a hard thing, uh, one of my kind of mental um, tricks that I play is, is I just, I just think of, well, what, what if like the worst possible case scenario were to occur with this situation? What would that look like? And I start to really think about that. I'm like, well, eh, worst case scenario, eh, maybe I lose my job. Okay. I still have my wife. I still have my kids. We still, you know, we have this, 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 and this. We have all these great things in our life, um, and and we'll be just fine, you know. And and so as I kind of go through that process, what, in in my mind, what that is is it's really me just showing my gratitude uh, for what I do have and recognizing that I can I can roll with the punches, um, and and bad things will happen sometimes, and good things will happen sometimes, and and you try to learn from all of it as it happens.
I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, The Journey of Becoming a Truly Remarkable Leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue. What some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There's no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of our problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Yeah, absolutely. We're much more resilient than we know we are. And one thing I really loved learning um, from my yoga therapist, um, Soraya, I want to call her Hoffman, she's married now. But uh, one of the questions she would teach us was, instead of what if, even if. So what if, instead of like, what if my house, I end up losing my house. Instead, it's even if I lose my house, I will be able to such and such and such. Uh, it's been very helpful for me personally to reframe that question. Um, in positive psychology, we had a practice called the worry wart. So that's pretty much what you do. You go to the worst case scenario. And then if we implement instead of what if, we say, even if all of these things happen, I lose my house, I lose my job, you know, then I'll be able to do this. And that way it kind of takes that deep, you know, that huge pressure of, if I lose my job, then I'm gonna do that. And you start going to that rumination and that high state of stress in your mind. Um, everything you think your body actually physiologically feels. So I, you know, Marissa Peer, she's a psychologist and she does self-hypnosis. She uses this example a lot when she does big presentations. She'll ask everyone to imagine a lemon, like she has a juicy lemon in her hand and you're going to just take a bite of that lemon. Now, John, what happened to you when, you know, if you were imagining that lemon? I imagine it being sour, right? And having okay. that, that, a reaction to it and what's the reaction for you like for me i start salivating just hearing it <laughs> um I, I i i i start to think oh, oh that's going to be disgusting <laughs> okay so you have a visceral experience yeah, your yeah. body kind of starts to fill it and all you're doing was imagining a lemon and biting into it and so that's kind of the example that i'll use or a pickle sometimes the pickles really like immediately sometimes your salivary glands will start releasing that saliva and then you can't speak on a podcast anymore but uh you you really go into that state where your body feels what you think so if you're consumed with negative energy negative thoughts then you are going to be putting a lot of uh, physiological stress on your body you're able to re you know rephrase it reframe it stop and wonder which is my wonder part stop and wonder saw through those negative thoughts then you're able to actually calm down. Your body can physiologically feel safe and secure and anxiety can go down and then you can perform at a higher level. You can be more creative. You can be more aware. You can listen better. You're able to be you and everyone, you know, all of those who are listening, you are important. You're authentic. You are needed. And to be at that place where we're able to be the authentic self, we have to be able to be healthy in our minds and in our bodies. And that's where that gratitude works and the wonder and the connection, they all come together to help us build that framework of being able to stand tall and be who you are meant to be, which is you. Like literally everything's inside of you is just being able to kind of, I don't know, swim through the muck and get to the clear water. I love that. I love that. Let's, let's pivot a little bit. I mean, so everything we've been talking about is absolutely, um, relevant to any individual and in our family life, our home life, uh, but it's also very relevant to our work life. And you do a lot of work within organizations and with executives to talk about these mindfulness practices and these gratitude practices. 
to enhance leadership, to enhance employee um, uh, health and motivation and those sorts of things. Uh, so yeah, let's go there and, and, and talk a little bit more about like what specifically can we take away from this discussion to help us lead better within organizations? Okay, yeah, last week I did a presentation for HR directors here in Utah, and it was so amazing to hear the feedback, like we really need this at our work, we really need to do this, can I share your slides with my manager? These, um, this reciprocation of the necessity for gratitude practices in the workplace just continues to prove to me how essential gratitude is when you're at work. I mean, every year, most Americans work about 2,080 hours um, a year. And that's just the average. You know, you've got those people who are there 12 to 14 hours a day, and then they only have two to three hours at home before they fall asleep. So this gratitude work was, in a way, for me, a sucker punch to give everybody the mindfulness that they needed to be able to make it through the day. But I personally have seen so many people fall because they have not been taking care of themselves. They don't feel appreciated at work. Presenteeism is at a super high rate. Um, you've got those who don't feel validated or valued. And so their work that they produce is just at a lower level just because they're just getting through the day. And I launched a pilot study in June of 2019. And it uh, one of the questions was, how do you want to receive appreciation at work like what will help you feel valued and I had different answers I had a monetary raise um, a letter of appreciation work-wide recognition and then gratitude expressed face to face and when you hear those answers which one would you choose or think that people would most likely feel validated in and, and appreciated uh, expressing it face to face I think for me yeah that was the that was the like landslide answer. I also use that question because my business coach for her thesis in her master's uh, degree, her business master's, she also measured gratitude in the workplace. And that was one of her questions. So I copied it word for word. I wanted to, in a way, test to see if her answers were correct because I was a little, you know, I was like, I don't know, face to face versus a letter or um, monetary reward. And my, my results were completely in line with her results. So we have two studies now that have shown like people just wanna be seen. Now that face-to-face -face can be really intimidating or vulnerable for some people. And there's a way to do it where it's actually really easy. You don't, there's a little process I teach, which is it needs to be sincere and genuine. And then you've got the face-to-face -face aspect. So what I ask uh, people, you know, my clients to do or those I'm presenting to, I ask them to think about three people that would benefit from them expressing gratitude to them. And then I ask them to think of two things that they've done specifically and what they're grateful for. And then two other things, maybe a characteristic of that person that they really appreciate. And so they are already armed if they're shy about expressing gratitude or they don't know how to do it sincerely or genuinely. They're already armed with this um, almost like, you know, script to express gratitude. Now, you don't go with your piece of paper up in front of them and say, OK, Billy, I really, you know, you're not going to do that. But at least it gets your mind working. And as you're doing that, you are starting to connect with that person before you even express gratitude to them because you're thinking more deeply about the things that they've done that have helped you. Then as you express it so sincerely and genuinely, that person feels and they receive, and you're both receiving at the same time. So there's um, endorphins that are released as you express gratitude. And one of the exercises in my post-grad program was that we would write a thank you letter to someone and then we would read it to them in person and then give them the letter. And scientifically it's been proven that that boosts your moods. It can boost your moods up to three months just by doing that. And, and so this is a kind of a little way to do that where you're not writing a letter, it's not as awkward, but you are going to that person and in a way doing a little short memo of that gratitude letter. And it's amazing how many people I know that don't feel appreciated at work, that feel lonely, don't feel connected. And one of my main reasons for choosing the workplace was I saw my, my first husband and my second husband both um, I'm not married to both at the same time, but I've seen how they struggled and how they felt alone, especially my, my husband now 
when I had my grand mal seizure, within three days, he's back at work. Nobody knows that he, that I, you know, his family is at home and there's, his wife can't drive. His wife is not even present, really. She's just completely gone and he's there needing to perform. How amazing it would have been if someone were connected with him and just said, you know, we're so glad you're here and you really matter. And you, you know, the way that you teach, he was a professor at the time. The way that you teach is really creating so much feedback that's positive from the students. You know, something genuine and sincere, but just that, you know, when I've, uh, uh, when I've interviewed the professionals that I have, executives and businessmen and women, one of the things that I ask is, who has expressed gratitude to you face to face and how did it affect your life? Some of them go back four to six years and say, this moment, this person said something to me and expressed gratitude. And anytime I feel down or think that I want to give up, I think about that moment and it keeps me going. So that's how powerful an expression of sincere and genuine gratitude can be. It, it, I, love, I love everything you said there. And, and it is so powerful. And I, and I love it. And it's also kind of sad. It's sad that you would, you would be going back six years to think of an example where that is that meaningful to you. Like why it's not hard. It doesn't cost us anything. Maybe just a, a little bit of time and a little bit of intentionality. Um, but if we're just free and generous with our praise and with our gratitude and saying thank you to people and giving positive feedback, it doesn't cost us anything. It engenders trust. It engenders a stronger relationships, and it has a powerful impact on them. Uh, and there's, if I'm a leader, there's no reason why I can't be doing those general, those um, genuine acts on a regular basis, so that people are feeling lifted up continually. And if I want to have a really um, productive, uh, high motivation type of a workplace with employees that feel empowered and are able to do their best work. Um, it's, it's one of the simplest things that I can engage in as a management and a leadership practice to, to help create that environment. Um, do, do you have a sense of why it doesn't happen more? I do. I personally struggled with face-to-face uh, -face expressions of sincerity or gratitude for a long time. And it's just about that vulnerable, authentic, you know, being that person that is in a way, you feel like you're sacrificing something of your privacy or you're sacrificing looking like a fool in front of someone else. But once you start this process of expressing gratitude sincerely and genuinely, you become so good at it. It becomes a natural thing that you just do. And I have a sister-in-law who is, you know, she's always been like that. She's the favorite of everybody. Everyone loves her. Why? Because she tells them who they are and what she sees about them and what she's grateful for. So she connects with so many people on a higher level. And I've been able to get, you know, it's extremely comfortable for me now to be able to look at someone and tell them, thank you. And you've done this for me. And the reciprocation of that person, you know, sometimes they feel awkward, but once you get used to just saying, thank you, that meant so much to me, or thank you so much. Just being able to reciprocate that gratitude, I mean, it's, it's so powerful. And like you said, it, it doesn't even take 10 seconds. It's just, you know, the tops is like two minutes. That's so much less than having to write a memo and then send it or get something approved and get this little prize approved for this person. It's literally just going and saying to their face, thank you for being here. You lighten up this room and your skills are absolutely necessary. And thank you for being on top of that memo I sent you the other day done and you are it's like there are studies about the roi of gratitude and that's something else that i like to share is you know there was a study of twenty three thousand um work people in the workforce and they were at all these different jobs and those who received appreciation at least four times a week regardless of where they worked they loved their job because they felt valued and they felt seen and I'm putting the value to see them. That wasn't in part, but that's what I interpret it as, is they feel like they belong. And that's what we are as human beings looking for is a place to belong, a place to connect. It's innate in us. We're herd, we're herd animals in a way. We want to belong. Yeah, yeah. So we, we all strive for meaning and purpose and connection. And so we shouldn't suppress kind thoughts. We should be open them freely, uh, share them freely and open them. Um, we're about out of time, but I, I really appreciate this discussion. And 
I want to give you a chance to share with the listeners how they can uh, learn more about you and get in touch with you. Thank you. Well, I just want to thank you, John, first of all, for giving me this opportunity. Gratitude is absolutely essential and 100% powerful and it's abundant. So the more you share, the more you receive. And um, to get a hold of me, you can go on LinkedIn and find me there, <laughs> Kristen Petrucci, or I have a website, kpspeaks.com. And I, I do trainings virtually. I do even a culinary experience uh, virtually for teams as well as this gratitude work. And then my passion is speaking. And so I've had so many amazing opportunities to be able to speak to associations or corporations or um, even religious groups. And when I do that, um, the, the power of spreading the word is is amazing. And that's what these podcasts are all about as well, reaching an audience that I wouldn't be able to reach in any other way. And so I thank you for giving me that opportunity. Thank you. And I encourage uh, listeners to reach out to Kristen. Uh, it has been a really great discussion and uh, perhaps we can have the opportunity to, to continue this at some time in the future. That would be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I hope uh, everyone has a, a wonderful rest of their week and uh, stay healthy and safe. Thank you. The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership. Ordinary, everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.